Good evening. Good evening. To all who are visiting with us this weekend, welcome to Saints Peter and Paul Church and to our Eucharistic celebration. This evening we celebrate the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The second collection is for works of the Holy Father. And please take a moment now to silence or turn off your cell phones. Thank you. Please welcome our celebrant for this Mass, Father Angeloni, and let us begin by joining our voices together, singing our gathering hymn found on your worship aid. All are welcome. Please stand. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how the hearts learn to forgive. Build a hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and fault of grace. Hear the love of Christ shall and divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> the Lord be with you. The Lord Jesus calls each of us to follow him. It can be a daunting invitation, but his grace and his mercy are enough for us. Lord Jesus, you gather your people into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you summon us to follow you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the path to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to be.
to us sinners, yet disciples, O Lord, you entrust to share in the mission of Jesus, who sent the twelve to take up the cross, to lose their lives for his sake. Let no earthly affections dissuade us, no inner fear deter us from taking up the cross and following Jesus, that by losing ourselves in sacrifice and in service, we may find life and the reward promised to the righteous. We ask this in his name, Lord, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a oh, baby son. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. Whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> one-liners. We oftentimes remember them, repeat them, retrieve them. For instance, frankly, my dear, I don't give up. The American Film Institute's choice for number one one-liner in the best quotes category. Runners up, Marlon Brando's, I could have been a contender from on the waterfront, or Brando's, I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. We know where that's from. Judy Garland's Dorothy came in fourth with, 
Toto, I got a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Number five, here's looking at you, kid. Bogart's Casablanca. Some other notables, you had me at hello. Anybody know that one? You had me at hello. Jerry Maguire, very good. Go ahead, make my day. Clint Eastwood, sudden impact. May the force be with you. Star Wars. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Jaws. Fasten your seatbelts, it's gonna be a bumpy night. Betty Davis, all about Eve. My precious Lord of the Rings. Hello, gorgeous. Streisand's funny girl. Wait a minute, wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet. Al Jolson, the jazz singer. The Film Institute, in categorizing the above, said that it is an intrinsic part of human nature to rank and file, to have a number one, a number two, a number three, and that it's purely entertainment. Now, far from entertainment, the words of Jesus, yes, many of the words of Jesus are one-liners and are at times unreal, harsh, and full of contradictions. The last shall be first, lose in order to find, take the lowest seed if you want to be the highest. The Son of Man came to, be, came to serve, not to be served. Our liturgy this weekend introduces us gently and patiently to ways in which common sense opinions do not always go deep enough. First, in the first reading, if you're an elderly woman with an elderly husband, you will not have a child. Enter the first reading. A distinguished lady shows great hospitality to the prophet Elisha, even to the point of holding or building a little room on the roof of her house and furnishing it for him with a bed, a table, a chair, a lamp, for whenever he does come back and visit. She's childless, yet Elisha promises that in one year she will be fondling a baby son. She is shocked, if you read the rest of uh, the passage today. She's shocked, she tells him, don't, don't be lying, but the promise comes true. What is more, the boy becomes a young man, but then he suddenly dies. Elisha comes from afar and brings him back to life. Life given where there was no hope. Death triumphing, but life restored. Contradictory in many ways, but that is the way of the Lord. In many of the pages in the New Testament, take St. Paul today, writing to the Roman church, that we are baptized into Christ's death and buried with him, a grim statement. If we die with Christ, Paul says, we shall also live with him. Die in order to live, and in the gospel, Jesus makes his statement that I mentioned, whoever finds his life will lose it, whoever loses his life will find it. No matter how we try to explain this statement away or neuter its content, it still means what it says. Losing your life is the only way to possess your life. Letting go is the only way to hold on. Ah, the paradoxes the seeming contradictions, the riddles. In his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul insisted on this paradox as being part of being human, which is to say in one sense that we are both morally frail and also morally aspiring. For instance, in Romans 7, he confesses, Paul, his own tragic doubleness. He says, for I do not understand my own actions, for I do not what I want, 
but I do the very things I hate, but I know that I love the Lord. In this, we are all a mystery to ourselves, are we not? We fail the good that we will, and we indulge the evil that we hate. G.K. Chesterton said of the paradox of being human that we are both chief of creatures and chief of sinners. Chesterton said that paradox is the beating heart of the gospel. In his journey of faith, these paradoxes of faith compelled him and us as well. So let me just take one line, a one-liner from the gospel today. Lose your life in order to find your life. Now let me say first that I don't know what life it is that Christ is asking you to lose, to surrender, to give up. I don't know. I do know that it's one thing to be faithful when the issues are very stark and very clear, when you know which way to go, and when you know that all is going to end well, when it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't threaten the way you live your life. It is quite another thing to grope in darkness when you're not sure, when you're afraid, when being a disciple costs. You have to lose something. When the Lord simply says to you, to me, hey, you have your gifts. You have the church that I gave you. You have your conscience, my grace, my good sense. Trade with them until I get back. You may indeed trade badly, choose poorly, decide wrongly. But when your master returns, he will not ask you how often did you get it right, but how honestly you tried. When your master returns, he will not ask you how brilliant you are, but how loving. He will not ask you how close to the vest did you, did you hold on, did you play it, but how ready you were to risk it all for him. Then you will hear from your master a great one-liner. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of God's kingdom. But only, only if you lose your life. Only if you lose something. Something that is making you dead inside. Only then will you gain life. Yes, gain life by losing it. And this is where I might lose you. There is a, a medieval philosophical principle that I'd like to share with you. It's Latin. Quid, quid, recipitar, recipitar, segundum modum recipientes. Stay with me. Stay with me. Quid, quid, recipitar, recipitar, segundum modum recipientes. Whatever is received is received according to the capacity of the receiver. Very abstract, I know. Let me break it open for you with an example. It is saying that you cannot put a quarter, example, you cannot put a quarter into a nickel slot in the parking meter. The quarter, quid, quid, re chipitar, whatever is received won't recipitar into the five cent slot because it is meant to take nickels. That is its modem recipientes, its capacity as a receiver. Now the principle, I believe, has much to do about the gospel and us and our text. Our one-lighters today have been about, in the first reading and in the gospel, welcoming, receiving, welcome a prophet, whoever receives a prophet in my name, etc. 
He spoke of welcoming a prophet and holy people and even disciples. If you rechipitar any of these, you will receive the appropriate reward. Sounds easy, but far too easy if Jesus said it. So this is where the philosophical principle comes in. Add to it what Jesus says, and you come up with the conclusion and the challenge, the modem recipientes. You cannot receive a prophet unless there is a prophet inside of you. Unless there is a prophet inside of you. The quarter will not fit unless you are the size, the parking meter, the size of a quarter. The gospel and the principle then has all sorts of implications. But for the disciple, for us, one important one. If we would receive Jesus, right, Sipitar, imitate Jesus, follow Jesus, then we must strive to be like him in all things. Call it compassion, call it hospitality, call it love, or an amalgam of some of them or all of them, but we are called by baptism to become like Jesus. We are called through the gift of the Eucharist to be Jesus. We are called through confirmation to witness Jesus. And we do that by being a welcoming community of faith, not full of one-liners, but full of grace, filled with words and actions that are loving. What makes it easy is that Jesus has first welcomed us, gathers us as church. As God, as God, he has little in common with us. By becoming one of us, he has everything in common with us. When he became the modem recipientes, we are receiving Christ into us and can do because he, and can because he first humbled himself. And mostly because he loved us. He fit into our skin. He fit into our parking meter, our nickel slot. And when we receive him with joy, we become him. That's the gift of the Eucharist. You are what you receive. You are what you received. In gratitude, then, we give thanks. As a family of believers, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became flesh. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers gathered as one to celebrate the good things that we've received from our God, let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. 
our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may more closely follow Jesus, building up the kingdom of God through our commitment to the gospel, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the diaconate, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to racial tension, and that the Lord will lead us to ways of justice and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the power of the resurrection heal those afflicted with the coronavirus, and for the continued safety of our families, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve in the military, health care workers, first responders, men and women in blue, and all correction officers, that they will be kept safe from all harm, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering of our parish and our families, that the hand of God will touch them. For all who have died, especially Peter Gatta and Geraldine Hanlon, that they will come to share fully in Christ's resurrection, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the parishioners of Saints Peter and Paul, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. And for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Loving God, you constantly bestow your favor upon us, the human race, the most favored of all your creation. Shower your love upon those most in need. Bless us all with your goodness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. we have this bread to offer, which earth is given. Human hands have made it become for us the bread of life. Mm -hmm. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Friends, let us pray that these are gifts be acceptable to God, our loving Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands to the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. 
By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and blood of your son our lord jesus at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and he gave you thanks and praise he broke the bread he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. Gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and we give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ that so we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, bishops, clergy, religious, and all of God's people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, St. Michael, St. Elizabeth, St. Teresa, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life with them and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Pray now as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. And by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, your friends, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your people, the faith of your church and graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. This is the Lord Jesus who calls us to walk in his ways. He is the Lamb of God. He takes away the sins of the world. Happier we call to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Please join us in singing our communion hymn, Christians Let Us Love One Another.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Eucharistic Adoration is the first Tuesday of each month. Check the bulletin. The parish and school administrations administrative offices will be closed July 3rd in observance of Independence Day. Guatemalan coffee will be sold next weekend after all the masses. Also like to wish Dick Barrow a happy birthday. Where's he at? He's outside. He says he's 62, but he looks like 64. So, <laughs> One other announcement which, that I received on my phone today regarding the uh, campaign, uh, the building campaign, which you see all around you. Our campaign is moving along great with the generous uh, support of our community. We continue to grow in gifts and thank those who have sent in their, their donation and their decision. This stage of our campaign marks our final approach as we, near, as we need the support of the entire community to reach out. You all received um, the building packet. There were over uh, 2,000 sent out in the mail. We received to date uh, 120 of those back. Uh, so myself, Father Nashville, on the phone calling people, uh, just asking you please to uh, Return in that packet is a kind of pledge card of sorts. If you can return that, uh, gift or no gift, uh, we appreciate and the generosity. Uh, return it so that we can kind of conclude this phase of the campaign. And as always, we thank you for your generosity and your gifts. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may the Lord continue to bless and keep your families, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have Please. a good week, folks. You too, Father. Thank you. Please join us in singing our hymn of sending forth, Lift High the Cross.